Hi folks, my name is Naral, and I'm part of the product development team here at Profound Logic. I wanted to show you guys how to debug your CSS styles in Profound UI. We get requests from customers every so often about how to troubleshoot their styles. Hopefully this video will show you guys some tools that you could use to troubleshoot your CSS. To begin this video, I want to show you two very simple rules that I wanted to apply to my grids. Over here, I'll pull up the designer and show you the new rules that I'm trying to apply. Over here, I really want to do is overwrite the background color when you hover over the even and odd rows in our subfiles, specifically our blueprint grid. What I want to do is change the default orange color into something that's white. And over here, as you can see, this rule should hopefully overwrite my current style, uh, overwrite the default styling. I saved this file in uh, an IFS in a file called MyCSS. As you can see, it's located in the slash profound UI slash user data slash custom slash CSS folder. If you're not familiar with the user data slash custom folder, one feature of this folder is that any CSS or JS file will actually be automatically added to your rich display sessions. This is really convenient that you can just drag and drop your files in here or create new files and then all of your rich display applications will actually automatically load the files. So in this case, anytime I run a rich display session, my new styles should be picked up automatically and they should overwrite the default styles. All right, let's test out these new rules now and see if they worked. Over here, I have a rich display application running. And if my rules worked, whenever I hover over this, the rows, they should be white instead of the default of orange. Uh-oh, it looks like my rules did not work. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what went wrong. The best tool we could use to figure this out is actually using the built-in developer tools of the browser. If you're not familiar how to bring up these tools, you could generally bring them up by hitting the Control, Shift, and I keyboard shortcut key. Over here, you can see that the developer tools are now open. In addition to the shortcut key, you could also bring them up by clicking on the menu, in the More Tools, and the Developer Tools option. This should be very similar to the other browsers. All the browsers have a different styling of the developer tools, but they should be very similar. For example, over here I have a page open with IE and Edge developer tools. And additionally, here's one for Firefox. They're pretty similar and they work in the same way, so you could use either browser you wish and they should all have the same features for the most part. Now that we have brought up our developer tools, I wanted to run through some of the more useful tabs that you could use to debug your styles. These tabs would be the Elements tab, the Sources tab, and the Network tab. The other tabs, such as the Console, Performance, Memory, are useful for separate tasks and you should definitely check them out as they will make your life easier in the future. Let's start with the Network tab. As the name implies, the Network tab records all network activity while the developer tools are open. As you can see, mine is currently blank. This is because my application has not made any network request while it has been open. In order to populate this, I could simply just refresh the page and it will make several network requests. As you can see, it's, it's creating several different requests, and it tells you the type, the status, and what initiated it, how big the size was, how long it took. This is very useful information to find out if any of any problems. You can also filter these data by you know, JavaScript files, by CSS, and so on. The reason why this is useful for debugging some styles is to first verify that your browser is making requests for it, and if it is, if it received it or not. As you can see, my browser has actually made a request for my MyCSS file and returned this as 200 OK. So this means that my browser has, it was able to receive this file and has, and has at least added it to my application. Next, we have the Sources tab. The Sources tab tells you all of the loaded files that are on your page right now. This is not limited to JS files and CSS files. It also includes images. This is useful to verify 
that you have currently loaded which CSS files or JavaScript files that your page has. Uh, for example, right now I have the profound UI CSS and the myCSS.css. I could drill down some of these different folders and to verify that there are any other missing files or not. In addition, it tells you the file structure that it got loaded from. This right here, as you can see, is user data slash custom slash CSS. This is the same exact file structure that I saved my CSS file in. So now, if you click on myCSS.css, you can see that these are the same rules that I wrote before. So you can tell that this is a file that I had and that my browser was loading it correctly. Now we can troubleshoot on why my rules is not working. And with that, we will use the Elements tab. The Elements tab will show you all of the elements in the DOM. In addition, you can see all of the applied styles for them in here in the Styles tab underneath. For instance, this rule for the body gets applied from profoundui.css and it overwrites the user, the user agent style sheet. This is what the browser does by default and then we're overriding them in the profoundui.css. In addition, there's another subtype called computed. This will show you something similar, but it'll show you the CSS box model. In addition, it'll show you all of the applied styles in alphabetical order, as you can see here. This way you could quickly find what uh, styling is being applied and from where. For instance, I could check where the background repeat Y is being applied and you could click on this link and it'll take you to the file in the sources tab. So going back to the elements tab, let's see if I can figure out what's going on with my rows and why the hovering color does not change. As you could see, they are orange when I hover over them. What I could do is actually I could select these elements and see what styles are being applied to them. One way I could do that is to expand this dropdown and then look for the element. Another is actually using this inspector tool that comes with the DevTools. This little button in the upper left corner, which you could toggle, lets you select an element on your application and it will drop it down into this list. So for example, if I toggle this on and then I select one of these elements, it will automatically select it down here and I can see all of the applied styles for it. With that being said, my rules affect the elements with the odd and even class names. For instance, the parent of this output, output field is cell odd. This is a cell in the odd row. And if you scroll down, you can see another cell with the even. This will be the second row. And you can see it goes on like that, odd and even, odd and even. What I want to do is actually click on one of these cells and then see why my styles are not being applied. So if I click on the styles, you can see all the styles that it's getting applied from and then in what order. So the inlines go first and then it goes to the next one and then it goes so on and so forth down. So since my styles only apply when you hover over the element, what I wanna do is hover over the element and see what styles are being applied. So let me go to this element and you could see that in the DevTools, you could see we added a class hover to that div. And you could quickly see that it's actually, oh, it disappeared. So it looks like the hover class gets removed as soon as you leave the row. This makes it slightly harder to debug since you'll need to leave the cursor on the row in order to see all the styles. What you could do instead is actually manually add the style to the cell. So if I double click on this class attribute, I could actually just type in hover and it'll actually add in the hover class to it. And with that, we can see why my styles are not being applied. It looks like that my styles are being overridden by one in profoundui.css. It looks like this rule is actually more specific and is overriding the rule that I created. So I'll need to update my rules to be more specific so that it applies over the one in profoundui.css. So let's do that. A quick way to test this is actually to edit it in the browser. So if I click on myCSS.css, it'll bring it up in the Sources tab. In here, any changes that you make will apply for this session. In addition, any additions you add will also apply. So if I add new classes or if I update any of these, they will all apply. So this is a good way to test out any new styles that you want to do or update any and see a visual feedback in runtime. 
So what I want to do to update my class and test it out is just to add the cell class in front of this, as with the odd. And this should overwrite the one in profound UI, since my CSS.CSS gets added after profound UI CSS. So the browser will actually take this rule over the one in profound UI.CSS. So now that I have made these changes, you can see there's an asterisk, so I could save them. And now, if I hover over, you can see now that it's hovering with a white color instead of the blue orange. So now that I know that my styles are working, I want to go back to the designer and make the change permanent. So let's do that. So over here, I'm going to make the same change I made in the DevTools. So let me just add this two classes. Oops. Save this file, and now here I'm just going to reload the page. So if I'm in the Sources tab, if I drop it down to my CSS.CSS, you can see that there's the new rules. Now if I hover over it, it should be white. So to recap, what you want to do to troubleshoot your styles is to open your developer tools and there you will look at the network tab and see that your application is pulling in your CSS file. If it is, you want to go to the sources tab and verify that the, source, that the file is correct. Afterwards, you want to go to the elements and then troubleshoot any of the elements that you're having problems with, click on them, and see all these rules are being applied. From there, you could update the CSS file in the browser, make the changes in the browser, verify that they do work, and afterwards make the change in the designer to your file. I hope that this video was helpful and that it showed you how powerful the developer tools are in order to help you troubleshoot your styles. I also want to give you a quick tip on how to troubleshoot some of your responsive CSS styles. In developer tools, there's a this option called the device toolbar. You could toggle this by clicking on the device toolbar button over here next to the element expector. And what this does is it changes your viewpoint to device. First, this is the Galaxy S5. You can actually change them to different devices like the iPhone X. You could even rotate the screen and you could change the percentage of it and you could make a custom one. So you could use this in order to troubleshoot some of your responsive CSS. In order to leave this page, you can just click on the device toolbar toggle again, and that will exit it. Again, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out some of our other videos in our Profound UI video series.